Let's let's get it. Let's yeah, get sure. It. Let's go. Good morning, Reese Her Valley Hotline for Thursday, February eighth. This is the nine a.m. update. We remain under a frost delay this morning. Please check out check back in for the next update at nine thirty. Pen and short. Mateo literally sitting on the moon. Ramon Arias <laughs> playing second base. It was fun going to games again. It was fun feeling the energy of the yard. And I'm ready for the next step. They're all exciting pieces. And I mean, you could look at a lot of lineups this year and you could really feel good about the game. And I don't think we could say that for the last few years. But, uh, br- <sighs> okay. Go ahead. No, you can say what you're going to say. It's, it was nothing. It, you, you lot, you've you ruined my train of thought by doing whatever <laughs> it is you just did. So thanks, Josh. Yeah, no problem. Um, you're welcome. I was going to ask you if <laughs> it's probably no, but do either of you like experimental rock? <laughs> How are you defining experimental yeah. rock? <laughs> How would you define it, I guess? I don't. I have no idea. Okay. Brad listens to whatever the radio puts in his ears. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You guess you're a, so. you're a top forties boy. Yeah, that's pro. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> okay, give me give me a band, Josh. I need. I, I I don't. I have no fucking clue what you mean by experimental rock. I was gonna ask. I, the point of this question is, I found not found. I knew the artist and stuff, but. Uh, this artist, the guy who is the lead singer of The Strokes, has another band. It's all experimental rock. It's called The, the Voids. And they, they have this album from like 2018 that's really good. And I was going to recommend it to you, but uh, I felt like experimental rock was very like borderline not you at all. <laughs> but, Again, I have no frame of reference for what experimental rock is. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're calling this. Like, okay, okay, okay. Josh, are you trying to start a rock band here? No. <laughs> are you trying to experiment? With us we, starting a band, <laughs> we can drop this if you you know it, you can't figure out the frame of what experimental rock is in the next eight seconds. But give me a song by them. Yeah, uh, let me think of like a good example of one. Um, so their album is called Virtue. Do you see that one by chance? Leave it, in, um, leave it in my dreams is probably a good example. Don't share your screen though or audio because then we'll hit, get hit with copyright. Because I'm yeah, sure they're looking. Yeah, they're gonna copyright strike us. Fucking <laughs> demonetize us, would you? Yeah, because we make so much money. From They'll this. super demonetize us. Well, the great thing is, is that for some reason YouTube is not playing in my headset right now. So to be discussed I don't know. later. I don't know why. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'll check it out though. I'll, I'll listen to anything once. Okay. And if it's terrible, I'll shit on you for suggesting it to me. It's like it's not <laughs> screaming music, so I don't know where you're. It's fine. Go. I don't. I don't just listen to screaming music. You okay. bitch. You listen to a lot of screaming. <clears throat> That's true. That is my primary genre for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that uh-huh. good? Hilarious. <laughs> I. That's Brad's the like the originality of that joke is just <laughs> blowing my mind. It's the first time I've ever told it, so it's original for me. Yeah, yeah. Josh, did you ever listen to the band that I told you to listen to? Not in full, no. I didn't give it like the proper time it deserved, so I I can't say yes yet. You're a piece of shit. I wasn't trying to like trick you. Like I genuinely no, I think you'd like them. No, I know. I know. I know. Do you like Ice Nine Kills? <laughs> <laughs> Their early work was a little too seen for me. <laughs> that whole monologue is so funny it's so good so, whatever album it is when that came out it really came into their own commercially and artistically <laughs> it really leaves them a cut above the rest <laughs> hey Paul <laughs> anyway. shout out Ice Nine Kills fucking, they, they're fucking sick dude absolutely but how are we doing tonight boys I'm doing pretty good anything new the week is almost over. I am. Uh, I'm hitting the links on Saturday. Ooh. Mm. Has it been nice down there? It's been like sixty here. Like nice enough. Days. Yeah. 
It's been brutally cold in the morning, which sucks. Like I woke up and it was like 25 today and then I left work and it was in the fifties. We're in that like time where it's just the, the, the temperature swing throughout the day is like crazy. The peaks and valleys are super wide. Yeah. Yeah. Like low of 20 and high of like <laughs> 70. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've really gone, been going through a few of those. The mid sixties on Saturday. Yeah. Nice. The course not opening until eleven because of frost, and then I'm in shorts in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good. Golf is a really good uh, like measuring tape of that kind of thing. Yeah. It's also funny the way different courses will uh, their policies on like frost and stuff. Well, like you guys ha- are more than welcome to call our frost hotline and hear my beautiful voice every morning updating you <laughs> if you want if you ever want to know. What our frost, frost status line. is? Do yeah. you ha- do you actually? Yes, I do. I update it every <laughs> single day. I update it first thing at seven o'clock, and then I have to update again at nine, and then again at nine thirty until an hour before you. <laughs> do you update it year round? Uh, yeah, because uh, it's not it's not just it's 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 the course conditions hotline. So. I'm just imagining in like it's like June. And you're it's, like, this is this is this is head groundskeeper Brad Mondell with your uh, with your know. frost update. There's no fucking frost. It's yeah. June. <laughs> I don't introduce myself as groundskeeper Brad. First of all, um, can we get a can we get your recording right now? Yeah, can uh, we can we yeah, get sure? Let's let's get it. Let's yeah, get sure. It. Let's go. Good morning, Reese Turf Valley Hotline for Thursday, February eighth. This is the 9 a.m. update. We remain under a frost delay this morning. Please check out, check back in for the next update at 9.30. <laughs> yes. Or if it's at 7 o'clock. I don't know why I did the 9 a.m. update. It's 7 o'clock. I say we're under a frost delay. Check back at 9. But you get Well, because it'd be big frosty today. That's why. Yeah, but I have to do it at 7 o'clock first. And then um, I can uh, wait to. Uh, I can say check back for the next update at 9. And then I got to do it every half hour after that. Until it's, sick. A, until it's an hour before opening. But yeah, like in the summertime, it's basically carts may scatter, cart path only, depending on if it's wet, so on and so forth. So now <clears throat> why why would you do cart path only if it's not wet? You wouldn't. Oh, okay. So the course that I played last weekend is just a pile of shit then. Oh, okay. actually no, this time of year we do because the ground with it being cold, yeah, it can ruin the grass if you're driving on it. So this time of year, yes. In the summertime, you wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Right now, we're cart path only until March 15th. Like just no Every matter day. what? Every day, no matter what. Wow. Yeah. So like <sighs> once I get to that final update, I say uh, course is opening at 11 o'clock, cart path only. Please continue to care for the course. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Just like the last three months, it's cart path only, you <laughs> cocksuckers. <laughs> and then I'm gonna I al- call you guys tomorrow just so I can hear your your beautiful voice on the phone. Yeah, and then I also have to update the Twitter account. The other day, luckily, I caught myself really quick. I was on the work Twitter and I accidentally retweeted something that I found funny <laughs> on Turf <laughs> Members account. <laughs> and it was like these two black dudes having a hilarious conversation <laughs> at each other. Luckily, it's luckily, I only reposted it for like three seconds. So no, oh, no. I was no. like, oh, thank God. <laughs> do, you, do you deliver the Frost update in Spanish as well? No, I do not do that. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you haven't picked up anything from, uh, from any of your boys over there? Uh, I just use translators, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I know some phrases, but like real basic shit. And they usually know like the jobs that they have to do if you say it in English because if they're doing the same thing every day, like if you say bonkers, they'll be like, okay. Yeah. Ooh, on yeah, this true. topic, I was at work today and there was this very old Indian man running one of the stores I was in. And like, I'm not an employee at the store, but I work behind the counter and stuff when I do our, our brand and stuff. And he's on the phone because the lottery machine shut down and he's like trying to call customer support, but he doesn't speak very good English. And uh, this lady on the phone is like, what is the address of the store? And this guy's like running around trying to find the address of the store he works at. And uh, he finally found it. And then he said it wrong. And then he just like gave up and was like, buddy, buddy, 
and then he just like pointed at his phone. And I was like, <laughs> what? So I'm like here on the phone at this random store trying to contact their lottery support. And I'm like here writing down phone numbers for this guy, and uh, he just has no idea what's going on. But anyway, that's that's that. I was eating lunch the other day, and this guy came up to me, and like I'm so I'm sitting in this like it's like a restaurant inside of an office building, and I'm eating my lunch there just by myself in a booth, and this guy walks up to me and sits down at my booth <laughs> with me. He's like, "Do you speak Spanish?" And I was like no like not at all and he's like i need a job and i was like i can't help you i'm sorry sick and then he just sat there looking at me like i was like yeah he finally left but like it was really weird i was like go up to the third floor there's drywallers up there i don't know like (laughs) what do you want me to do man go to home depot like the rest of them (laughs) we'll cut that out (laughs) It's a I've, great place to look for work if you need extra hands. Absolutely. I've I've had Spanish speakers approach me thinking that I was one of them before. Like oh, probably yeah. five or six times. We have we have a guy at our job who's I mean, if you look at him, you're like, Yeah, he just got here yesterday. <laughs> but he's just a just a white kid from Baltimore County, same as Luke. And like almost every new job we go to to people strike up conversations with him in, in, in Spanish and he's just like I don't know what you're saying man <laughs> yeah I've had probably five or six times like just out and about I've had Spanish speakers come up to me and try to ask me a question like I don't know and they just kind of come up to me and I'm like I don't speak Spanish <laughs> no no habla espanol and then the best one though was when I was 16 and we were on family vacation up in New York. We were at the Empire State Building. They were handing out these virtual cassette tours and they gave all my family the English ones, but they gave me a Spanish one. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, that's good. I love that. All right. Well, now that we've got that going. (laughs) Should we do official open now? Official open, yeah. All right. Hell yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 80, the big eight zero of the uh, Talking Birdie podcast. The boys, as you can tell, are all here today in the virtual Zoom studio. We're back together again, uh, not three months apart. Uh, we're really starting to, hopefully, we're going to start trying to do the ramp up here for the season pitchers and catchers report, I think, next week. Sounds right. Things are happening. Um so yeah, I think we're gonna start trying to do the ramp up here, and we might have a guest uh, in a week or two. We're still gonna try to hammer that stuff out. It's nothing crazy, but it'd just be something a little bit different, um, different perspective. He is a friend of mine that works in sports. He is currently working, I believe, as a broadcaster for a college hockey team in North Dakota. I hope I'm right about that. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna clear it all up. When we get when he gets on here, but yeah, just different perspective, somebody different to talk to. Uh, big Orioles fan, big Ravens fan. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get that worked out and we'll get him on here pretty soon. But uh, I think most importantly, he disagrees with you a lot, and we need a little division. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get into that. We'll get into that. It's <laughs> it's calmed down a little bit, honestly. I I miss it because there was it felt like there was a time where like one of us could be like, man. The sky is really blue. And the That's other one would scary. be like, actually, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, it's actually a shade of gray. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was fun. We need to we need to get that going. I'll have to hit him up. Be like, dude, we need to we need to start dissing each other again. <laughs> I need to hate you again. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm starting to like you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> now, just wait till you talk to him on a podcast. You're going to be like, oh, man, this guy's actually cool. Can't yeah. Do yeah, I'm dis- maybe we shouldn't have him on. Just keep the hatred there. Yeah, the disdain I have for him fuels me sometimes. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so a big, big thing happened uh, last week, guys. And it was unfortunately, I think, a day after we recorded our last episode. Because that is always what happens. So I think we should kind of talk about what we were doing, where we were. Um I was sitting down here as I usually spend my evenings and 
refresh refresh Twitter as I'm pretty sure most people do, and uh, got a little little bite from Ken Rosenthal that just said, "Breaking Orioles close to acquiring Corbin Burns," and I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> And so we sat there just, you know, refreshing like a madman. And then Passon jumps in. He says, you know, Orioles close to acquiring Corbin Burns. So obviously it's happening because Passon doesn't tweet. That's what I love about Passon. Passon doesn't tweet anything until it's real. He's not like Boob where he says dumb things just to be the first one on it. Passon gets his ducks in a row and then he fires off his tweet, which is what I love about him. And so... So we're watching it unfold, you know, they get, cause it's the, the, the way the trade news always comes in. It's like, you don't get the full trade right at one time. You know, you find out the centerpiece of the trade, you find out where they're going. And then the news of the return starts to trickle in a little bit after that. And so I don't know about you guys, we can have this discussion, but when I first saw the tweet from Passon that said, Joey Ortiz and Dale Hall going to Milwaukee for Corbin Burns, I was like, okay, but who else? Yeah, me yeah. too. <clears throat> like like I, I thought, I, I thought that was going to be just a like, this is what we know right now. That's not the final thing because I, I, it, I didn't believe that that was all it was going to take. Well, and to I, be fair, there, there, there kind of wasn't who else. There was the draft the pick. Top pick, yeah. I know, I which know. is still decent, but you know, it is. But if you had to pick a sport in which draft picks hold the least amount of the least value of the big four, you would definitely we would all agree it's baseball, right? Hundred uh, percent. Yeah, especially when you're picking the I mean thirty fourth overall, and you already have the number one farm system in baseball uh, for a long time. Even after the trade, we still have the number one farm system in baseball. Yeah, uh, I mean they yeah. didn't they didn't move a top five prospect exactly. in this deal. That was my first thought. Who was uh-huh. it? Uh-huh. Who did it take? Yeah. Not that I don't think D.L. Hall and Joey Ortiz can be fine players, but considering what I expected to give up for it, uh, I was certainly pretty pleased with it. Well, especially given what we've heard about what the White Sox wanted for Cease. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you, you you think, okay, the White Sox aren't moving from Jackson Holiday, so what the fuck are the Brewers going to want for Corbin Burns, who is – uh, and I don't even want to say he is objectively a better pitcher Yes, than Dylan Cease is. So like, I I just like Ugh, this is gonna hurt a little bit, and then a couple minutes later, Passon's final, you know, the final trade, Ortiz Hall, and the compensatory pick, and I <clears throat> I have to think with new ownership, they feel like they're gonna have a pretty darn good shot at keeping Burns after this year. Um, but you know what? Even if they don't, I make this deal every single day of the week. Yeah, I mean, we were backloaded with infielders, and we kind of had to do something either way. So, and if one of yeah. them had to go, I mean, dude, Ortiz is Ortiz is my pick. Yeah. Ortiz or Norby really did. Of like, yeah, and Norby probably too. Yeah, yeah, but like, but I was didn't have to Toby get rid of Mayo. Didn't like have a, to get rid of yeah. Didn't have to get rid of Mayo. Didn't I have was to get rid of Westberg. Obviously, I was, didn't have to get rid of Holiday. I was actually ready to get rid of Mayo. I was talking to someone weeks before that, and I was like. Uh, if I had to pick between Cowser and Mayo, I, I like Mayo, but he's a right-hander at Camden Yards. So I think that diminishes his value, and I would have wanted to keep Cowser. We didn't have to get him up any, either of them. Yeah. Yeah, like without getting into like how Corbin Burns affects the rotation, like just get the Brewers' side out of the way. Like we gave up Ortiz and Hall, who are 25 years old, I think both of them. Um, don't really have a hall you could use in the bullpen, I guess, you know, very strong lefty, but, you know, kind of took a step back as a starter this year has had some arm issues and, um, you know, just couldn't find consistency this year. He's pretty good, but, um, you know, good piece for the brewers, of course. And then we give up Ortiz who like was never going to get playing time here. No shot no. in the next like six years. So at 25, you know, great glove, great bat, um, just get him out of here. You know, just no need to let players waste away in AAA, especially good players. <clears throat> it's good for the players, too. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think Joey Ortiz was, uh, you know, under the delusion that he was going to get his shot at being an everyday starter here this year. He knows what's ahead of him. He knows what's in front of him. He knows where he stands. I'm sure he's a smart enough guy to know. So 
for Hall, it probably hurts because Hall was going to be on the major league roster for sure. And it seemed like Deal Hall definitely liked being an Oriole a lot. But at the same time, you have to think too, uh, Milwaukee's probably going to give him as much of a shot in the rotation as he's ever going to get. Yeah. So yeah. if he still has aspirations of being a starter, then I'm sure it's good, it's good for him too. Yeah, it'll be fun to see what either of them can do, like in more of a consistent role with that team. And like, it just never made sense here. So like you said, do that trade every time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, obviously Burns is kind of the guy we were hoping for this off season. And, uh, cannot believe they actually him. did it, dude. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe I, Say what you said about the, the secret list of Elias. <laughs> yeah. Things I would do if I had a better owner <laughs> day one. Yeah, Over. it's 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 almost it's actually kind of funny to me too how Elias made it a point to say that like because he made a point to say this doesn't have anything to do with ownership. I now believe even more strongly that it has to do something with ownership because he went out of his way to say that. Yeah. And maybe maybe it doesn't in the way that a lot of people were saying where Rubenstein was just like, "Mike, do it right now." But I'm sure they had to run it by him. Sure, they did. And I also believe him that this has been in the works for a long time. I think he said since November they've been talking to Milwaukee. Um, Fred and I had this conversation on Saturday where I think it was after we played golf. Um, Caps just scored. Sorry. Uh, they will still lose. Uh, <laughs> so I- I'm thinking, I, I was kind of like, you know, I believe him that this was in, in the works because there's no rush in the off season. You know, I'm sure these guys are having like these passive, like little phone calls every day or every other day or whatever. Just, you know, like, have you changed your mind yet? No. All right, man, I'll talk to you later. Like, you know, I'm sure it happens a lot and they, they talk to each other quite a bit, but the thing for me and, and Brad, I'm sure you're right that something had to have been run by Rubenstein, but what I think what I think the difference is, is Elias probably, if this change of ownership doesn't happen, Elias is probably looking at like, okay, this is a guaranteed rental. So I don't want to part with these guys that we've got for under control for so long that we like so much for a rental. And in my, this is just my opinion. I have no resources. I don't know anything, but just in my opinion, the ownership group probably tipped the scales by him saying, all right, well, now we probably have a good shot at keeping this guy past this year. So it makes it a little more more worthwhile to go ahead and trade some of these prospects that they really like a lot. Yeah, that's a fair point. It's spot on, yeah. I mean, no way that was happening under Angelus. I mean, Burns might command like up to $30 million a year. Um after this season, it's like that I'm, was never going to happen under the previous regime. I mean, I, I'm even on the fence on whether it will be whether or not it'll be smart to extend him. Sure, depending on what the cost is and how many years, considering he's going to be 30. So, starting pitchers never fair in these contracts. Kind of, it's kind of wait and see because, like, part of me wants to, and part of me is like, let's not give him like a seven year deal <laughs> or anything egregious like that, you know. I love those longer deals for older pitchers with like heavy incentives on the end of it, where it's like, yeah, you can make thirty million dollars if you pitch one hundred and fifty innings, and it's yeah. like that. That's that's probably a happy medium where he gets like guaranteed money for a while, but you know, like at the end of the deal, the team still has a little bit of protection there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you guys are you guys are right about that, but I mean, these guys if they only take care of themselves. Yeah, they've they've they're pitching well into their thirties now. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, it doesn't concern me a whole lot uh about the length of the deal. I just would like to see it I just would like to see him extended because it just feels like you're getting more out of the trade if you get more than yeah. one year of the, the guy you're acquiring. Yeah, for sure. I don't I hate rentals like I've always been fans of smaller markets especially like, like deadline that. rentals like at least if you're getting them for a full year it's like all right it's it feels a little better but deadline rentals it's just like yeah <laughs> you're giving something up to do to get this guy for like two months yeah, it's yeah. world series or bust at that point and we know due to the randomness of mlb playoffs it uh, 
That's no guarantee. Like all yeah. the most lopsided trades in recent memory have happened at the deadline rental phase. And it's like where all the, the prospects they give up are these, you know, next big thing guys. I mean, we were victims of it multiple times, I believe. And uh, just uh, it's not fun. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Who who are you referencing? Oh, no, I'm thinking more Machado. My brain went to Machado trade, but all pretty much all those guys were bust except for Kramer. But I wouldn't say that was like a. I guess, trade, but. I, I guess at this point, considering Machado only had two months left and the fact that Kramer is doing fairly well. Yeah. It was no, I think we won that trade. trade at this point. Yeah, for sure. If, if comparing well, I mean, it to the if you're if you're comparing between the Orioles and Dodgers, yes. But I mean, man, he's still playing a hell of a good yeah. base, playing insanely good baseball. However many was it five, six years later? It goes so, back to the extension conversation under the previous owners, though. 2018, I believe, was the summer they traded him, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So fitting into the rotation, I mean, Burns obviously won. We got Bradish, Gray Rod, Kramer, Means. Like, that's an awesome rotation. I'm so happy to have John Means back. Um, yep. That, that top three there was like, I don't know exactly how stu- Stuff Plus is measured, but it's like a made-up analytics person stat. But <laughs> in the second half of last year, the the top three in all of baseball to lead in that category were Burns, Burns Bradish, Rodriguez. Bradish, and yeah, and Rodriguez. So that's <laughs> hey, they're the that's top fun. three in all of baseball. All of baseball. They were the top for this for the second half of last year. Yeah. Second half of last year. So we get a little specific here, and it's in the stuff plus stat, which I'm not sure how it's measured. But, <laughs> I mean, that's okay. That's, that's fine. any stat where you could play with the numbers like that, and you get three guys in the same rotation on the same. Team. There's nothing we love more on talking birdie than cherry picking stats. Yeah, it's cherry picked, but whatever. If anyone's got a problem with it, you can come see us. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> yep. you, can, you can catch us outside the talking birdie studios, and uh, we'll have a little talk. <laughs> <laughs> Which are three separate locations, so good fucking luck with that. <laughs> well, they know where you work now, Brad, so you know that's I think they've you know, always known where Brad works. That's true. It's like comes up on every episode. It's like, yeah, yeah. when I was at Turf Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows where Brad works. So referring to the team as a whole now, like where where do you guys see need for improvement or like where would you guys like to see things happen, I guess? Because like I think as a general team we're in great shape. Like I don't really see like a very weak link anywhere. I uh, think with the departure of Hall, I think the bullpen's a little light. It's lighter uh, than it's, offense it, and starting rotation. It's sure. definitely not going to be what it was last year. You can't really play replace Felix Batista, and it's not just the closer spot. It's every spot yeah. behind that too. The setup spot gets weaker. Yep. The seventh inning guy gets weaker. I mean, well, I guess not necessarily. It's just really the closer spot now because we got Kimbrel. So. Yeah, there's just a lot more emphasis on guys like Perez to do better. It's a lot of emphasis on like how's Tate gonna do coming back from a like, kind of a riddled year of injuries, and it's just a lot if of we, unknowns there. For sure. If we do have healthy Dylan Tate, though, man, that's a really, really big, big addition. Oh, that's yeah. like that's like a free agent signing or a trade acquisition. Yeah, he was lights out, and uh, I think it, last time he pitched consistently was like beginning of 22. Yeah, Maybe. he was like insane. I think he hit like ninety nine. His sinker was moving like crazy. They and, say uh, he's feeling really good. He's like, and apparently he's like really big on that like drive line baseball thing mm-hmm. up in like Seattle or something. Yeah. Um. So Dylan so, Tate. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm. It's pretty much the end of my thought. Go ahead. I believe Dylan Tate is one of two guys that we got. It's still with us in the summer of that 2018 Dan Duquette <laughs> sell-off. Yeah, yeah, the so fire sale. It's Tate and Kramer. Yeah. Hmm. Which one was Tate a part of? Did he come from? He came from the Yankees with Britain. Cody. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Britain. Zach Britt with with Cody Carroll, I believe. Yeah. Mm. Look at that memory. <laughs> well, I remember being excited about a lot of them at the time, and a lot of them didn't really pan out, but. <laughs> yeah. I do think it did kind of start us. It shifted the mindset of the organization and got us into full on rebuild mode. And then Elias was the guy to take over for that. Yeah. So it all worked out. Did you guys, did you guys ever hear? I, I feel like I am like living in the Twilight Zone and I'm the only one that ever heard this. And I don't remember where I heard it. So maybe I am making it up. But I heard that there was a trade in place 
the year prior that would have sent Zach Britton to the Astros for like a huge package of prospects and like included in that was like Alex Bregman. I have heard of that before. Yeah. I don't know how far along it got. And like, I think Peter like nixed it or something because he was, didn't want him getting rid of Britain because he thought the team was was still good. Yeah, it it for sure was. But like, man, Alex Bregman would have been nice to have. Yeah. He's like very quietly had a very good, like end of his 20s here. I don't know. He's like 28 or 29 now, but he's still like, you know, not as good as his top seasons for sure the last couple of years, but he's still like a five war third baseman. That's pretty, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I think he's coming up to for coming up on free agency pretty soon too. Yeah. And uh, Astros just signed El Tuve to an extension. So that's uh you know, big, we always get compared to them. Big, big extension for El Tuve. Yeah, I didn't way know too that. much, way too much, in my opinion, for as old as he is. But I mean, I get the sentimental value of wanting to keep a player and guarantee like this is basically telling your fans like he's going to finish his career here. And we just wanted yeah. to do what it took to make sure that happened. And I think there's value in that. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see. I love when fan bet, fan bet when teams do that kind of stuff. But now Altuve, um, if he's how many years was that deal? Like eight years or five. Something like that? Oh, five years. It's only five. Um, he's got a good shot to hit 3,000. 3,000 hits. He's at 2,050 right now. Um, you know, it's going to take some pretty prime years from him to, like, actually get there, but he'll at least get close. Yeah. And um, he's probably the next one to do it out of... Uh, <clears throat> I think they said he's the first second baseman in Major League history to, like, at the, the wording they used was weird, but, like, earn $300 million. Like it was like over the course of his, if you, if you add all of his contracts together, they add up to over three hundred million. Like lifetime I guess earnings, yeah. Yeah, I guess he's like the first second baseman to do that, so that's cool. Interesting. So he's yeah. essentially thirty-four. He's thirty-three years and two hundred seventy-eight days per Baseball Reference. So thirty-four, and you said how many years is the contract? Five. Yeah, I mean it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for him to get three thousand, but if he plays beyond that contract, he might do it. He needs 185 hits a year, which is not impossible for Jose Altuve, but it is asking a lot of like uh, a 38-year-old man. How much does he want it, though? Because he can very easily become a slap singles hitter and do nothing else. That's what he's been for a long time now. He's got he's got some pop. That's not, he got he hit 17 bombs and only 360 at-bats last year. How many yeah. hits did he have? Um, what's like his last full, full season? Like 500 plus ABs. 2022, he had 28 bombs, 921 OPS. How many hits? Uh, 158, so. Ooh, tough. And his career high in hits, okay, I mean, he had 225 in 2014. That's a long time ago. That was over 700 at-bats. He had four straight years of 200. Um, so is if he's your, healthy, is, he can is, do it. Is your math right on that? that he, he said he needs 185. So he's year? it's three thousand is what we're looking for. His current total is what twenty seventy four? No, twenty forty seven. A twenty forty seven. Okay. Yeah. So that changes the math a little bit, but one ninety. So. Okay. Yeah. One hundred ninety hits a year. So it's a tall task, but you know, if he plays the five years, he stays healthy. He'll probably get pretty close, and then maybe he plays another two years, maybe, and he just gets all the way there. If not, he'll get very close. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. So, just to follow up a little bit last week on what we talked about, which is the sale, obviously, which honestly I'm more excited about that than anything else. Yeah. Um, just getting rid of John, just man, just thinking about it makes me so happy. With his coloring book in the corner, <laughs> <laughs> kicking his legs. Yep, kicking him back and forth. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking John. And you can see it too, because that man is like almost legally a midget. He's very little. He's a little man. How tall do we think he is? Oh my god. All right. Five, let's, yeah, let's do five, let's do five. let's do let's do some betting line over unders on okay. John Angelos' height. Five what five. Are we? Five five. You know that? No, that's just oh, okay, a strong guess. guess. Okay. All, All right, right. I'm go gonna ahead. go. I'm going five four. I'm thinking five three. All right, let's see. This might be hard to find. He's a corporate guy. <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> Michael K rips John Angelos for being small. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Baltimore oh. Sports and Life. John Angelos is a fragile child. Let's see. Man, we can't even get. Oh, wait. Peter Angelos, we have his height. That doesn't help. John Angelos' height and weight are unknown at this time of writing. Okay, so I'm I'm, I'm amending my guess to five one because this man has clearly made an effort to make <laughs> sure his height does not his height does not reach the internet. <laughs> okay, okay, so Peter Angelos is five eight. So we need to find a picture of John standing next to Peter. Can we mm. do that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can handle that. Let's see. Let's see. John. And great fucking content right now, by the way. Oh, it's top tier. Actually, okay, I think so. it is because if any, there's anything Oriole fans like, it's making fun of the Angelos family. So, so. I'm looking at this picture of Elias and Louis yeah. Angelos, and he's significantly shorter than Elias, like by a whole head. Yeah, so hey, dude, his head comes to like Elias's chin. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> so okay. All right, all right. Well, so hold on. How tall is Elias? Oh, yeah, I was about to say, uh, Mike Elias height. Let's see. And how tall do we think a head is? Like nine inches? Is that too light? Maybe. So Elias is 6'3. Okay, oh, that's a, that's this a... is different. Hold on. All right, then I think I feel all right about my 5'5. Five, five. Mike Elias, 6'1. Couple conflicting answers. <laughs> yeah. Uh,. Good content. Fantastic content. I think 6'1", since it's the same site that I got Peter Angelos' height from. So we'll tentatively say 6'1". So what's 6'1 minus like 9 to 10 inches? Like 5'3". All right. So one of (laughs) us is right. (laughs) Probably. The point is. How tall is a head? Let's look that up. That's easy. the (laughs) The point is. John is a small, small man. <laughs> oh man! Hopefully he's not listening. I just, so, I didn't, I didn't think head, I realized. A head is six to seven inches in width and eight to nine inches in length, so about eight to nine inches. So either the five three guess or the five four guess was correct. There we go. So we're right there. Probably we're, five four though, because Angelus is like right to his chin. I'm gonna mm-hmm. say it cuts off like an inch of the nine. Yeah. So. Whoever was that Ryan at five four or was that Brad? I said five five. You were five five. I said five four. I think we nailed it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think we did too. Can the title of this episode be John Angelos is a midget? <laughs> sure. <laughs> or or just John is short or something. <laughs> John sold the team and is short. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah. Or John Self's team semicolon is short. Is short. <laughs> <laughs> do we, we think just put uh, Gus John Angelos's height? Do we think John is? Uh, do you think he's rocking the like Ron DeSantis fucking platformers inside of his shoes to give him a couple <laughs> extra inches? I don't know. That'd put us at like five one if he was doing that. It ain't helping, buddy. <laughs> he's doing that nobody's gonna know they're gonna know <laughs> looking a little taller today john yeah all of a sudden he's like he's like the uh he's like the bald guy that suddenly has like a luscious head of hair like overnight <laughs> yeah. and thinks and thinks no one is gonna notice <laughs> yeah that happened overnight huh grew a whole head of hair god peter's just i can't believe he's still alive that's crazy to me i have no idea i mean he's been like mia since 2018 (laughs) yeah i mean do we think he's just on life support and then like they can decide when they want to pull the plug he's probably fully bedridden i bet he's like still has his mind and stuff but i doubt he's physically capable Uh, of his his i don't know that he still has his mind no i I don't know if he can even open his eyes like he might have like some of his mind, but like yeah. I don't think he's uh quick witted or anything like that. He's ninety four. I, I don't think he can go step into the courtroom and win a case. <laughs> no. 
Dude, right. he looks like a goblin. <laughs> like, holy shit. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm getting big Hannibal Lecter vibes looking at this guy. <laughs> this one's good. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His eyes are all like cockeyed. Yeah, like one's like down here, like yeah. hanging out by his by his mouth. Yeah. He looked like this when Cal was still playing. That's crazy. Dude, he's 94. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if if John Angelus did anything, he like improved his father's legacy as an owner. He did. Somehow. He really he, did. He set the bar even lower. Because I I have found myself thinking to myself like, man, I guess Peter really wasn't that bad. <laughs> Peter just he didn't sustain his spending. Yeah. I've I've found this out because Peter bought the team the year before I was born. So like as I understand it, like for the rest of the nineties he spent pretty aggressively. And then he just stopped. Nothing uh, really happened. <laughs> I think John is better than Peter. He brought in Elias and even though he knew he was not gonna spend money, he found someone he found a way for them to become at least somewhat successful while he can still be cheap. Don't you think that's pretty scummy, though? What if this was John's plan the whole time? Like, you're just going to cut costs as much as possible, going to build up the team, like, where the team's successful, the front office is self-sustaining, and then we're going to sell. Like, that was the plan when he took over the Dude, team. Dude, uh, why, like, why else would he not cut? Why would, else would he never commit to more than a one-year? He wanted as well, little money on the books as possible because that yeah. drove up the value of the team. Yep, it's been in talks probably for like five years, I would say. Yeah. Come well, like, uh, at least he sold us. Yeah, I don't know, for sure. Yeah. This is the best thing he's ever done in his he, life. He, if he, <laughs> This is the first accomplishment of John Angelos' life is selling this baseball team to someone who actually cares and has the money to put into a baseball team. Um, I highly recommend to you guys, um, I listened to it the other day, uh, we had a guest on a while ago uh, named Jake Luke. He was here with Spencer Schultz. They both do a. Uh, they both currently do the Exit Fifty Two podcast, um, just a general Baltimore sports uh, podcast. But before that, they were the hosts of Baltimore Beatdown, which was kind of the inspiration for this show. It's this. It's this. But they talk Ravens. You know, it's just a fucking bunch of idiots on a Zoom call talking about sports and then putting it out to the world. But um, yeah, we had Jake on a while ago, and he decided to do like a little deep dive on uh, on old Daddy Rubenstein, and it was pretty interesting because he actually did like really do some research. It's, it's almost like a podcast biography of of Rubenstein, and I fin I finished listening to it, and I'm now even more excited that this guy is going to own our baseball team because. As far as billionaires go, he seems like he is genuinely a good person. And that's pretty uncommon <laughs> for billionaires because you kind of usually have to do some really scummy shit to accrue that kind of wealth. Um, but this seems kind of like a uh, like a full circle moment for him. Like he's, you know, he's getting towards the end of his life. He's not, it's, it's crazy that the guy is 78 or whatever, because when you look at really? him, you listen, yeah, and you listen to him talk, he's like, he's very sharp. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd recommend listening to that if you want a little background on, on, Ru on Rubenstein. And uh, I think if you are not excited about this, uh, this sale, I think this could get you, uh, get you a little excited about it. And, if you are already excited about it like me, I think it'll take you take you to the next level. Is that on because Spotify? It's, yeah, it's everywhere. It's on the uh, the Exit Fifty Two feed. Okay. So if you just do Exit Fifty Two podcast, it'll be on there. He is seventy four for those keeping score at home. Okay, sorry, sorry, Still. David. I gave you four more years. My bad. Still four more years. Four <laughs> <laughs> should we should we hit up Daddy David? Daddy try David will ignore all of our outreach, <laughs> but you can try it. New we are, regime, we are, let us talk to people now. We already have members of our staff working on it, reaching out to Rubenstein's representatives, and we'll, we'll keep you updated. Our outreach it's, team. It's my cats with an <laughs> iPad back there. Yeah. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> and Brad, after his morning frost recording. 
<laughs> Bam. Send a DM. When, when, Day when 462 you... of DMing David Rubenstein. <laughs> Man, I feel like I fucked up that frost recording when you made me do it on here because I didn't know if I should do the 9 a.m. update or what the course <laughs> opening is, and I, I thought about it too much. <laughs> Brad, you I am, I've, I'm happy to report that what you just did is not going to be on the frost report tomorrow, so you have you have a chance to redeem yourself. In the I morning. know, but people are gonna people are gonna hear it on here and be like, "Oh, this guy is no good." It's like I'm never calling this hotline. <laughs> that's for goddamn sure. <laughs> I wouldn't even want to golf there when there's no frost. That guy right. doesn't know how to deliver a frost report. Jesus. Feel, uh, let me see. I can play it for you right now. Let me see if you can hear it. Oh, please. This is what I want. <laughs> say, I, I tried finding the number. But. We should have just called it right now, like on air, and put like a phone in front. Oh, it's Thursday, February 8th. This is a 10 a.m. update. The Hialeah will be opening today at 11 o'clock. All cars must remain on path. And please continue to care for the course. Thank you very much. Have a great day. There you everybody, go. everybody hates you as soon as you Thanks. say all cards must remain on path. Yeah, but it, it, it's every day since like I know December. So whatever they can. And you guys off. are a membership club, so they they know the drill. Yep. It's not just Beautiful. random idiots but, like me. But anyways, that sounded that, that, that sound a little more smooth, I think, than what. I yeah, that was pretty good. That was you really you dialed it up there for sure. <laughs> Really leaned into the, the role right there. Yeah. Love I was hitting the ball insanely good today at the range, which means I'm going to deliver the worst golfing performance that's ever been <laughs> given on Saturday. I'm going to do nothing that. of productive value on the course. Man, always happens like this. Have you been going by yourself lately? To play or just hit the ball in the range? I guess both. Uh, I never play by myself. I did it once, and it was depressing. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Sorry to hear that. Because it doesn't matter how good of a shot you hit, because no one was there no. to see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. You got no I sank like I dude. I sank like a thirty foot putt when I was playing by myself, and I like I couldn't even <laughs> get excited. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't like, high five anybody. I couldn't like. Be like, hey, I sunk a thirty foot, thirty five foot putt for birdie or for ball, for par, and people would be like, "Sure, you did." I've well, seen you were, putt. No, you there didn't. Was, <laughs> there was this uh, member at the course I worked at down in Florida, and I would talk to him every day. His name was Craig. He was probably like eighty years old. He was like some retiree that moved down from New York, and he would talk baseball with me every day. Because him being from New York, he was a Yankees fan. But normally he was golfing in a group, but one day he was by himself. And that was the day I actually happened to be by him when he sunk one from about 80 yards out. And then he came over to me. He's like, you need to sign my scorecard or they're not going to believe I did this. <laughs> <laughs> you, need oh, to sign the, you need to sign this as a witness. It's, I mean, it, dude, it's real, for real. Like, I can't imagine. Like, most players are never going to ace a par three and, you know, sink a, sink a hole in one. But can you imagine if the one time you do that oh, in your horrible. fucking <laughs> life is horrible. when you're playing by yourself? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you like, can't even, like, record it either because no, no. it shows up on a phone. No, and then and then everyone will just be like, yeah, cool, you cut some shots together, great. You can, your fucking film editing degree is in the mail, buddy. Anything to not believe. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and also, like, Imagine if you, there's a lot of people keep like really shitty balls for, you know, like par threes with like a water carry. Imagine you pull out like this, like old dusty, like top flight ball. Cause you don't care if you lose it. And then that's when you hit your ace. <laughs> so then like you, you're like displaying this like meme ball on your thing because that's the one that you got a hole in one with. Love I think it. about that sometimes. And then I think you're never going to hit a hole in one, so it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it's like a twice in a lifetime shot if you go consistent. All you have to, I mean, all you, you just got to get a little lucky one time. I mean, yep. very, very lucky one time. But uh, yeah. My it's grandpa's a co- done it a couple times. Yeah, my, gran- my grandfather had a few. My grandfather, I did not get the golf jeans from because he was actually a good golfer. <laughs> <laughs> I've stuck the green on some par threes a couple times. It felt pretty good, but yeah. I don't think I can't say I've ever been close to one. I just can't drive far enough for that yet. It's just 
too far, and usually I don't play those I'm, par threes. I'm quite sure there's probably some par threes that you're capable of driving far enough, Josh. Yeah. On par threes, yeah, but most of the courses I play, I have like two par threes, so that's not a lot of opportunities, and then the rest are like fours or fives. Only two par threes on the whole course? That's a very Sometimes, strange yeah. course. Now, this yeah. is nine holes, not 18. Okay. So, like, yeah. Okay. Not a lot of opportunities there. Not that I go that often. Well, it's supposed to be like a normal par 72 is two, three, like on the front and the back, there'd be two threes, two fives, and the rest fours, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anything else on rotation, ownership stuff? We acquired Nick Maton. Brad's mad about oh, it. Oh, my God. Um, we got Levon Soto today as well. That means nothing. Nope. Yeah, we have an announcement of our new group chat name, and that's <laughs> Matone's Mob. I'm pretty sure it's Mayton. Mayton's Mayton, Mob. Yeah. Whatever. I don't yeah. want to pronounce his name correctly. You don't have to. You um, know what his nickname is? Self given. It's Wolfie. He just decided I'm Wolfie. Please I call know. me Wolfie. Please call me Wolfie. My... Wow, that's the most cringe thing I've ever heard in my life. Imagine giving yourself a nickname. Oh, my God. Listen, a lot of good teams have shit players. The problem is not all, not in all, in, in not all those cases are they actually blocking someone good, and I think that he is going to block Jackson Holiday for at least a few months. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I'd no love shot. to be wrong. I'd love at, to be at, wrong. But that, at, but, worst, at worst, as we sit here on February 8th, before pitchers and catchers have even reported to lovely Sarasota, Florida, I do not have any energy to devote to being upset about this. <laughs> I do. I I'll, I'll take care of it for you. Then. I know. I know you're picking up my slack and Josh's slack and pretty much everybody else in this fan base is slack. If he's not um, cut by March 15th, uh, there I would are, be greatly surprised. There are other people that share my disdain, but I am putting a lot of – like. I'm putting like Joe Burrow hatred energy into this now. I know you are. Yeah. Trust me, I've teams, seen it. Teams that won 101 games don't sign people like Nick Maton to play them every day at second base. It's just not a thing. Yeah, I mean they did it with Frazier. They did it with Odor. They he's a left-handed batter. That's why it matters. They they clearly have shown they didn't were... have Jackson Holiday. Do you remember okay. when we picked well, up? Well, they did, Lee, but they he just, wasn't like he wasn't they, like pushing being MLB ready. They still blocked better players. Do you remember when we picked up Lewin Diaz last year and Franchi Cordero? And yeah, but I, well, I Terry? But that's different, okay? Because Maytone doesn't have any minor league options. You don't need options. All they have to do is put him on waivers. They can option him if all yeah, he has to do is be DFA'd. Like they can, but that's all they had to do with Frazier and fucking Odor too. So. Right, but with Frazier. And Odor, I believe, they gave them major league contracts as a free agent. They committed money to them. They didn't commit any fucking money to Nick Maton. He's essentially a waiver claim. They traded cash for him because the Tigers DFA'd him. And Odor and yeah. Frazier were at least like real major league players, even if they were bad. Yeah. Like they both had both had teams. past success that they were obviously trying to rekindle. Also, if it makes you feel any better, Brad, which it probably won't, because I know how you are when you get fixated on shit like this. Mayton is a horrific defender. Awful. So they will not uh, they will not have the we want his glove in the lineup excuse because he's a horrific defender. Frazier was a the worst defensive second baseman in baseball. Mayton was he actually was like, or did you just are you just saying that? No, like, <clears throat> the, like and, and what metrics are you using to, to, I, to back up this claim? I I honestly can't even remember. I just know that we even agreed upon this like on this podcast. I don't even know. No, he's not great. I understand. I understand. But he, he made... was dead he was dead last in like a few different Here, uh, based baseball, on... baseball baseball savant, he was in like the third percentile of DR DRS, I think. Based defensive on run DRS, okay. defensive run saves, Nick Maton at third base last year. If you were to project over the whole year, so he didn't play the whole year, but if you did, uh Negative 32 defensive run saved. God that damn is right. Atrocious. So let me see Frazier here. I will say to Frazier, he's better than Maytone. <laughs> Absolutely. And I use third base because that's his yeah, primary yeah, position. But, uh, Frazier at second base over the full year was a minus five. So that's so much, much better. At least Frazier was like close to average. 
but yes. yeah, yeah. Different. Okay. And again, totally I, I it, w- rightly or wrongly, I firmly believe that management and all they still thought they were, they still felt they were ahead of schedule last year. Again, rightly or wrongly, however you want to feel about that is up to you, but I still believe that that is how they felt. And I don't think they were, th- there's no, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that we're in win now mode now. And that was not the case last year. Yeah, I think they, last year our they traded for Corbin Burns. They're in win now mode. Yeah, unless Nick Maton has a Linsanity run in spring training, which is uh, he's going to. Okay, he's going okay. to. Okay, all right. I just want to remind you, Brad, and I'm not and saying it's, this it's is good. going to happen. I want to remind you that we've had these same conversations about Ryan O'Hearn. Okay, that's the one guy out of the last 20 I've been wrong on, and I, I know. admitted that. All right. I know. I, I know. A, uh, I know. I know. Hey, 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 hey. All I'm saying is you're blowing is your good. you're blowing your anger load a little soon, buddy. This is not the Jordan Lyle <laughs> signing no. of the year. No, it's not. I, I'm not I'm not 100% certain that it's not. Well, you you were very certain earlier. So now you're <laughs> chat. Wait, wait, wait. Frazier, Lyle, and hold on, hold on. didn't warrant a chat change. <laughs> I was hold up. I was very certain about what. Let's clarify what you're saying. Right about you. You said, and I quote, "Nick Maton is going to start four days a week." And you were oh yes, very yes. sure about no, that. No, yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm trying to say. I do. I do believe that's what's going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No shot, dude. He's no shot. Le- dude. He's this a left handed This will not be my bat. favorite team so, anymore. <laughs> so is Jackson Holiday. Yeah, but they're going to say, "Oh, he needs more seasoning. He needs more seasoning, bro." <laughs> bro, bro, Sig, Sig, what do you think of Jackson? He's like, "Bro, he needs more seasoning, bro." Okay, I, and I will say again, all that occurred before we had an ownership group coming in worth one hundred and twenty billion dollars. Let Things be, change. Let me be clear. Things I change. Love, I love Mike Elias. Uh, let me I be don't, clear. I don't, want him to, <laughs> I don't want him to go anywhere, but this is the one thing that he has done that's pissed me off is he places a high emphasis on having a garbage left-handed veteran bat in the lineup. It's been the case for infield bat specifically. It's been the case for five years. You could argue that maybe only the last two are relevant with Frazier and Odor because we were tanking before that. But Frazier and Odor were still there on at least playoff contending teams. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, let me be clear. Oh, My fellow let me, Americans. Let me be clear. Uh, uh, Nick Maton is uh he, he's gonna start. He's gonna start four days a week. And uh <laughs> listen, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yes. That is how I feel. <laughs> that is what I think is gonna happen. Do you guys know the skit, the SNL Christmas skit, where they have like the the elves are complaining about like their crappy tools, and then Alec Baldwin comes in and like craps on them for like five minutes? Do you know that skit? I have never seen SNL. I never plan to. So no. Okay. Well, they're using like these kind of crap tools, and then Alec Baldwin comes in and he's like the union guy or whatever, and he's like. The tools aren't the problem. You guys are the problem, basically. And like, I'm thinking just, and then he gives them new tools so they can work better. But that's a very high, high overhead of the skit. But all I'm thinking is like Elias had crap tools with previous ownership, which is why you saw Odor, uh, Lyles, and we were also a tanking team. Matt Harvey, you know, the signings we made last year. <laughs> I forgot about that. Matt, Matt Harvey is a throwback a little bit. But we now were, you we got the tanking. shiny new tools. Like Ryan said, $120 billion ownership group. All that's I am stuff. saying, I, I am I don't claim to know because I don't, but I just think that things change. And I would be very, very surprised if the approach doesn't change once this sale is made official. Which by the way, I must add the the only thing that's been more enjoyable about this sale is reading all the stories about how badly not only the owners, but also Rob Manfred wants to be rid of John Angelos as well. <laughs> Makes me like happy. the reports out of the owners meetings were like, you know, we're not going to hold this up. Everything's looking good. We want to get this done as soon as possible. Manfred literally said the same thing today. He was like, we want to push this sale through as soon as possible. <laughs> and I've never heard <laughs> anything like that at all, which is just so 
unbelievably amusing to me. Do you think Angelos was in like their owners' meetings that they probably do a couple times a year? And he's like, "Guys, it's Flag Day. I can't believe we came here on Flag Day." <laughs> I think that Angelos was only at those meetings because he had to be. I don't think he said a thing. I think he was like I think he was like me uh, when I was at the job that we did in Canton, where I happened to be. I I the my boss was not on site that day, and the like general contractor, like the guy that ran the job like came up to me and he was like, he's like, who's, who else is here? I was like, Oh, it's just me and this other guy. He was like, are you in charge? I was like, I guess like, no, but like of the people that are here. Yes. Sure. And he's like, cool. Well, um, I'm going to get your number. We have foreman's meetings every Tuesday. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm not a foreman, but, uh, sure, man. Okay. And, uh, so then like the next Tuesday rolled around and I saw him in the morning. He's like, got the foreman's meeting today. And I was like, yep, sure do, man. You bet. And then like walked away with the guy I was working with. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to that fucking meeting. Right. And he was like, of course you're not. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then stopped. it's nine o'clock, which is when they meet and I'm doing something and my phone rings and it is this motherfucker. And he's like, "Hey, we're getting ready to get the start, get the meeting started. We're just waiting for you down here." And I was like, "God damn it! Why, why do you want me here?" <laughs> and so I was working with this guy Ben, and I was like, "Dude, I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go to this meeting, the foreman's meeting." Yeah, I gotta go to this foreman's meeting. So, in summation, I sat at that table and just listened to people talk because I don't know enough about i can't i can't give you a timeline on when this stuff is going to be installed man because i don't know okay <laughs> i just work here man <laughs> and it finally got so long i sat in that meeting for an hour and this was an hour i'm not getting anything done by the way my boss doesn't know i'm in this meeting so he thinks i'm working <laughs> he thinks i'm upstairs pulling wire doing whatever it was we were doing that day wait hold up so explain again who's the guy that made you come to the meeting if it's not your boss he's the the general contractor it's basically the guy that runs like the job okay so he's the he's the main boss of that particular job and then he corresponds with the you know the drywalling company and then the painting company and everybody the, everybody else so, so he, he, he thinks he, 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 he has some authority i don't yeah he's the head of the job yeah, yeah. okay me and uh, me and my coworker ended up calling him ladder guy because he uh, he once didn't like how my coworker was standing on a ladder, so he made him come down and give him a demonstration on how to properly stand on the ladder. <laughs> Make sure you're doing it like. Th what was the difference between what your guy was doing and what he did? So, have you ever seen a platform ladder? I mean, maybe. I think so. But. So it's it's a, it's an a you know you know what an a frame ladder is you know what I'm talking yeah. about yeah. you fold it open. So a platform ladder is just. Imagine they take one set of rungs oh, off yeah, and yeah, then yeah, they I just make you. a platform. So it's, yeah. you, you have like more of a stable base to stand on. Yeah. He was standing on that, but he had his back like, like, you know, you climb up to the top of the ladder and you stand there. He was turned around 180 degrees. So he was facing so he, the steps. Yes. And he made him come down and he like walked up the ladder and he stood there and he was like, this is how you stand on a ladder. <laughs> That's beautiful. So Instead yeah, of just saying, "Hey, you can't stand facing the steps." Yeah, he also made me. Have you ever seen a? Uh, you ever seen a ram set gun, Josh? I gotta look this one up too. I'll just explain it to you. You don't have to look it up. It's, it's like a, it's like, it's a, no, yay big. Yes. Okay. Similar. It's like a real gun. <laughs> yes. So you load it with. You stick a fastener in the end. It's usually like a nail. Um, it's for it's for attaching things quickly into um, concrete. So you put it in there and you put the thing in there and you load in strips and they're literally like 22 blanks like of powder charge. And you hit it and it fires the nail into the concrete. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fucking sick. And we have one that's on a pole because we... Do we do them in the ceilings? Because like you know, poor you have like poured concrete floors, so you can just shoot stuff into the ceiling. And this pole is set up in such a way where when you push it up, it like pulls the trigger. 
So you can just walk around and just like... Tush, 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 tush. Awesome. And he made... If we, were, if we sat it down, he made me pull the strip of shots out because he thought it was going to start firing itself. <laughs> That's how guns work. Yeah. Yeah. You, never mind the fact that you have to physically manually... I mean, it was like a muzzle loader, dude. You have to put the nail into the thing. You can only load one nail at a time. Like, you have to stick it in the end, fire it. Stick a new one in, fire it. And this guy just thought it was going to, like, fall down and just, like, start fucking mowing kids down. <laughs> Like Tiananmen Square or something. I was going to say the end of Breaking Bad. <laughs> I've never seen Breaking Bad, so that would have gone okay. right over my head. Okay, never mind. Um, so, yeah. Someone's laughing. <laughs> Someone is, yeah. <laughs> Probably more people because everyone's seen Breaking Bad except for me. Uh, but, yeah, so, again, I'm sitting in this meeting well over an hour. And he hasn't even asked me anything yet, which made me really mad. <laughs> Like he he made a point to call me to make me come to this meeting, and then he didn't ask me shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally, I did the like the thing you do when you're like on a bad date, where I texted my coworker. I was like, "Dude, you need to call me right now and tell me something's wrong <laughs> up on like I, don't, I think it was on like the tenth floor or something." I was like, "You need to call me right now and tell me something's wrong." And I made sure I put my phone on loud. It was on vibrate because I was in a meeting. I made sure I put it on loud so everyone would hear it ring. <laughs> he calls me. I don't even remember what he said, but I just was like, all right, man. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Like, I was like, oh, all right. All right. I'll be right up. All right. All right. Just. <laughs> so I looked at the dude and I was like, something's going on upstairs, man. I got to go take care of it. <laughs> and I was out of there. Yeah. And then I told my boss about it and he laughed really hard. He's like, why did he think you were a foreman? I was like, I don't know. And then he, <laughs> he went over to the guy the next time he saw him. He was like, he was like, he's an installer. He's been doing this for like a year. Don't make him come to foreman's meetings anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, why didn't you say you weren't a foreman? Because I, I did say I wasn't a foreman. Okay. I did. Okay. I was like, I'm not a foreman. But he viewed me because he hadn't seen, he had only seen me as like the lead on this job. So he saw me as the authority figure for our company. So he wanted me to come to these meetings. Need you. Come on. That's hilarious. I'm so Brad glad we're done that. Out of it. <laughs> I'm so glad we're done that job. And that's Peter Angelos. Or John Angelos. Yeah, Peter in Angelos summation. Yes, that's anything. John Angelos sitting at the owner's <laughs> meetings. You're not even an owner. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Just get the bully. That was another thing that Jake had said uh, on a different podcast that I was listening to. Um, it seemed he said it seemed like John liked the idea, like the idea of running the team, and then he quickly realized <laughs> it's not what he wanted. <laughs> not for me. I'd rather get Carter Fate's career off the ground. What is the joke? I don't, <laughs> dude. You need to fill me in on this. What the fuck is this? I have to deal with Carter it. Faith because it's it's a it's a running joke on O's Twitter, and I don't understand it. I don't know the exact relationship, but he's like largely responsible for her music career. Huh? Like he? I don't know if he funds it or if he's like good buddies with the manager or something like that of her. But I don't know him and his wife like push her career. Okay. So that's I hope it. That helps. We have this long-standing punchline, and that's it. I don't know the like. There's probably more to it. Let me see if I can find more. But like, you know, it's just funny because he has like a 23 year old country music singer, and that's like what he would promote on his Twitter <laughs> for like Oriole stuff. Yeah, it's really. Well, cool. that in the concerts, you know. Yeah. Exactly. All oh, right here. Her father is a lawyer who represented Peter Angelos of the Baltimore Orioles. So it's all just, uh, what's the word there? when Nepotism. Thinking? Nepotism, yeah, that's the word. Yeah, there we go. So. Well, boys, I think we should probably wrap it up. Yep, on that note. <laughs> Brad looks tired. I'm tired. Josh, you look like you could keep going, but I think we're going to wrap it up anyway. That's okay. I understand. Okay. All right. Well, this has been fun, everybody. Thanks for tuning in once again. Uh, as you can see, we're making a very, very aggressive effort to get back to some regularly scheduled Orioles programming. And 
hopefully we would like to uh we'd like to continue that yeah i'd say we're on like a two week body every other week schedule but the day is uh a mystery (laughs) yeah yeah that's still a wild card month from today i'll be in uh sarasota okay cool very looking forward to hearing about that i can't wait man yeah we're gonna go to two games go fishing the day in between and then i'm gonna play golf uh that friday I think our final answer is I'm not going to be there this year. So. I didn't. I didn't yeah. anticipate you. It was there. a long shot, but you know, yeah, was looking at it. But yeah, all right. Well, that's all for tonight, then. That is all for tonight. We'll that's get this thing up here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Josh can get this thing uploaded uploaded in the next fortnight. Yeah, we are getting some tech upgrades in the near future. So yes, you know, talking birdies moving up. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. You know, in April, courtesy of me. Courtesy of Ryan. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, have a good night, guys. Uh, Listen (laughs) all the way to this. All right. Ryan's tool. Josh, you are never doing the outro again. (laughs) Holy shit. It's improv. It's uh, improv intro is bad. All right. It's all bad. It's It's all all bad. bad. You don't you don't have the you don't have the facilities for that big man.